Well, first we'll start with just a little bit of background on HSS sections themselves. And the, re the really the, the reason for this is to, to see how um, this process and how it's made, and it, it is made differently than other section types that are, are shown here. Uh, you know, wide flange channels and angles are, are hot rolled, whereas HSS is made from uh, cold forming plates. So we'll look at the process a little bit, the things you may or may not have known about HSS. Uh, and as you know, the HSS is, uh, sections are used uh, in structural, uh, they're used for architectural features, uh, industrial, OEM, they're, uh, offshore applications, etc. It's a very versatile system, uh, excuse me, member that uh, in a lot of ways is favored by architects uh, when you do see the steel because of the, the closed, uh, smooth exterior. But, but we'll really start with looking at how these uh, sections are manufactured. There's really three main ways in which they are produced. Uh, the weld round form square process, the form square weld square process, and both of these uh, use electric resistance welding to, to weld the seam together. And then there's also the submerged arc weld process, uh, which jo joins two places, actually two seams for this uh, manufacturing process. First of all, the, the steel um, comes to the manufacturer of HSS uh, in coils at the required thickness. Uh, and then they take these coils and, and unwind them and split them into the width that they need to produce the sections they're going to make. And so this is where the, that's done for all three of those processes that we looked at a few slides back. Uh, and now we'll start to see how they're different starting with the weld round form square process. Uh, in this process, what first happens is that they take the flat sheet and they roll it up into a circle or round and then weld, in, uh, weld the seam using the electric resistance welding, the ERW welding, uh, across that seam while it is a round shape. And once that weld is produced and, and part of uh, that process, uh, the, the two steel ends are pushed together and, and current is uh, used to heat up the, and, and weld the two pieces of material together. And we're not going to go into the details of that weld. It is a very strong weld and there's a lot of testing on the quality of that weld. So you, you, you are really getting a one piece here that has a very strong seam. But that weld process creates uh, sort of flashing on either sides or you know upset uh, on either side of the weld both on the outside of the tube and on the inside. Now the weld material that's the excess weld material is removed from the outside during the manufacturing process so that you have a nice smooth finish on the outside. You can obviously see, still see the weld uh, and the seam uh, but it is a smooth finish. Uh, but on the inside, the weld is left, typically. Uh, so you do have a weld uh, material on the inside of the tube when the manufacturing process is complete. Some manufacturers can remove this uh, if you need to. Uh, some, sometimes we see where you might want to fit one tube within another. And if this is the case, uh, the weld material on the inside needs to be removed from the outer uh, tube so that you can slide one within the other. But that's sort of a specialty use. Generally speaking, the weld on the inside is not removed and, and you know you don't need to. Uh, so once you have the round section, it can remain round and it, it will just be go through further forming in order to just make the members nice and straight and cut to length. Or at this point, they may also be formed through more rollers into uh, square or rectangular shapes. So you're getting steel that starts off as one flat piece uh, so it gets, it gets worked, cold worked up into a circle, welded, and then uh, maybe worked again in order to get the corners and the flat sides. This is uh, pretty much by far the most common process used to produce HSS sections. The ASTM 500 and the new A1085 uh, specifications uh, can use this method. And as I pointed out, this is an electric resistance welding uh, process. A similar process is called the form square, square weld square process. And in this case, uh, the shape is directly formed into a square or rectangle, rectangular shape. 
and then welded in that rectangular shape. So it starts off, if you kind of look at step one here, it's flat, gets formed through two, three, four is the, the square or rectangle, and then it goes through the electric resistance welding process there. And note that in this case, there's no cold uh, working of the sides of the shape. So uh, the sides here are not uh, formed in any way, so they start straight and they remain straight. So there is less cold working of during this process, and it does carry less, less residual stress when compared to the uh, form round weld square process, or excuse me, the, the previous process we looked at, the weld round form square process. <clears throat> and for these two methods, the, the you know, they're very similar to one another. We'll kind of look at these both in the same way as the ERW processes. And there are limits to the size that you can create uh, for squares. Uh, they're shown here, one and a quarter square to 22 inch square.